Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about understanding the electric grid, the requirements, structure and grid stability. So your benefit of the course is basic understanding of the principle, understanding of the tasks and how they are solved and I show you typical solutions as state of the art. So this lecture is not a detailed plant engineering but I concentrate on the fundamentals. So to understand the resilient electricity system there are two threads. Thread number one is the energy as a global quantity, thread number two is power as a local quantity. And for the sake of completeness I show you the full content of my course. But today we concentrate on load shifting and load shedding. So now let's get started. The electricity system consists of the main part which is, surprise surprise, is the users. They inform by the application of the law of conservation of energy through power frequency control, the generation units, how much power they need at every instant of the time. And if you are interested in this, please go to my course A3 about grid control. Now, the generation converts other forms of energy into electrical energy and sends this energy back to the users. So this is done through extra and high voltage level, through medium voltage level and low voltage level. Now let's concentrate cross-section which may impose a contingency on the transport of electric power. Here you can see a DC current flow through a piece of cable. It enters, spreads into this current density which is uniform all across the cross-section and leaves the cable at the other side. While it does so, it generates some magnetic field around this current and that's it. Now when we change from DC to AC, the current is going up and down and let's see what happens if the current goes up. If the current goes up, the current density goes up, the magnetic field becomes stronger and while this happens, we generate a lot of eddy currents. These eddy currents are circling these magnetic lines and look at the outer fringe of this cable. There, these eddy currents are in the same direction as the original current, whereas at the center they are opposed and they weaken the current density. So this means when we look from the side into the cable, what can we see? The current is flowing only at the outer fringes of this cable, so to say at the skin and therefore this thing is called skin effect. So this depth where the current is effectively flowing is something like 9 millimeters for technical cables like aluminum or copper cables and the effective area by this is 200 square millimeters and believe me as an engineer you should not put more current on the long run than 500 amps across such a cross section. Now what does this limitation mean for the transport capacity of overhead lines and cables? Power is the product of voltage time current and if we have a single phase system then it is the phase voltage times the phase current. If we have a three phase system we have three times as much and after some mathematical transformations these are the formulas. If you are more interested in this, go to my lecture A2 where I will explain this. Now we will apply this to a typical 11 kV cable. As we have shown before, this cable has a current carrying capacity of 500 amps and putting it to this formula we see 9.5 megawatts can be transported across such a cable. And now look, there is a certain correspondence between the kV and the megawatt and this is roughly one to one. This is a very crude, but believe me as an engineer, it's a very practical, rough application of this law of the skin effect. So kV is the equivalent to megawatt. If you want to transport 10 megawatts, you need something like 10, 11, 20 kV. So once again, back to the power limitation by the cross sections. Once you have installed and decided which voltage level to use in a system and you have determined the lines and all the equipment insulation level, then you can say the peak load is corresponding to the peak current 
and the peak infeed power is also corresponding to the peak current of such a line. And this leads to the iron rule number one in the construction and use of electrical networks. Never ever exceed the maximum line current for more than approximately 15 minutes. And never exceed the maximum line load for more than approximately 15 minutes. So what does this mean now? If we have more than this, for example, we can relieve the situation by load shifting. As was already explained in B1, in lecture B1, about the load profile, we have used already the load profile of, for example, 10 rural households. And if their maximum peak load for more than these 15 minutes is below the peak load that is allowable on this line, it, everything is okay. But suppose now you do not have this transport capacity of the line. It goes down and suddenly we have too much current for more than 15 minutes and we must do something. One solution, as is shown again in this sector B1, we do it by load shifting. So this means the loads are shared somehow, distributed more evenly, and we have the load shifting, which saves peak load, but it does not save energy. Another and second example about load shifting. We assume we have a load profile of a larger area. Typically, it has a peak at lunchtime and at the evening, another so-called evening peak, and then the electricity consumption goes down as we humans go to bed and we take the electricity out of the network. And now let's assume we want to plug in a large amount of electric vehicles in the evening hours. We see immediately this exceeds the maximum line capacity and something must be done. And the solution is, for example, moving and shifting this load to the early morning hours and then the situation is relieved. This could be done, for example, through smart grid technology. A more severe contingency is the shortage of energy. The law of conservation of energy is an eternal law. It says electrical energy cannot be invented or destroyed. It must be converted from one type of energy into another type. For example, let's take a hydropower plant. If you're interested in greater detail of this, look into lecture A3 about grid control. So we have the potential energy of the water while it's stored in the high basin. When it goes down to the turbine, all its energy is converted into electrical energy at the consumers. And now let's assume we connect suddenly some more electrical load to this. So at the first moment, due to the law of conservation of energy, before the turbine regulators come into effect and there will be more water put through the turbine and will be converted into electrical energy, all this energy must come out of the kinetic energy of the rotating masses, which become by this slower and slower. So this means the frequency will go down, as you can see here. Now, if the regulation process works all right, as it does, the power frequency control due to this effect of the perpendicular pendulum will recover the frequency and the system is stable again. But now what happens if this does not work? The frequency goes down, goes down, and we know when the frequency and the speed of a process is too low, it's no good to continue. So if this continues, the lower threshold for this so-called under frequency protection of the system will come to effect and will cut out the generating units. And this means blackout. How to prevent that? Now let's repeat this process. Again, we reconnect a higher load suddenly to the system, the frequency goes down. But when we see it goes down and before the frequency limit, this critical value, we take load shedding, we take some loads out of the system, relieve the situation, the frequency will go up and we have the recovery of the system. And if maybe we have the feeling that this whole load shedding is too much, we do it in two steps. So the frequency goes down. In step one, we activate load shedding step one. The decline is still there, but it is slower, slower, but it reaches another frequency limit. And this is load shedding step two. And then the frequency recovered and the system is safe again. So this is the effect of load shedding. I thank you very much for following my lecture today. Please stay tuned to my lectures. I thank you very much. 
and have a nice day. Bye-bye.